Hey chatters, I just want to do a quick video on a new release for Claude Code, which is this agents functionality. Finally, you can add specialized agents that your sort of main Claude Code agent can call upon, which is super cool because now we can create these more refined workflows. I've developed something called the Pact Framework. More information on the link in the description for the blog as well as I have a link to the GitHub with the prompts, including the ones I'll use here, to help you in your agentic engineering or your vibe coding. We want to follow some specific patterns that are going to ensure that you don't make so many mistakes, don't have to fix all this crappy code from the beginning. So PACT stands for Prepare, Architect, Code, and Test. Prepare being doing all that research on things like documentation, APIs, architect like how is this actually going to be architected for you coding actually doing the coding and then creating tests along the way to make sure that code actually works and everything integrates so let's head into it i'm going to show you what i've done and how you can create your own agents this video assumes you already know how to set up claude code so if you don't i have another video for that link in the description slash you can just google it it's pretty straightforward but we are going to be in the terminal We'll run the command Claude and we're going to get this screen. So the first thing we're going to want to do is do our slash command, which will bring up all these options. And you see here we have this agents option. You can see I've already created all my agents, but you can just go to this create a new agent. And then you have these two options projects. So that means this agent is only going to live in this project or this repo you're working on or personal. This means that it'll be accessible throughout all your projects. Since the packed framework is global, we're going to set up personal. So it's everything. And then I would recommend doing a generate with Claude. Even if you have the prompts already, you can just feed that in as an example. So now we describe the agent. Again, we'll say, yeah, an expert software engineer on security just for the sake of this video. And then it's going to go, it's going to take a second and it's going to create what is a markdown file of that agent, which is also awesome because it's just a simple markdown file. The next really cool thing is that you can individualize the tool use for each agent. This is really important if you only want an agent to be able to do specific things. So if we just quickly go down to show individual tools, you'll find, we'll find all the different tools that it has access to. And you can turn them off by just going down to a specific tool, hitting enter, and you see it turned it off or hitting on. And then when you've chosen those tools, we'll just hit continue. You pick the color, we'll just do automatic color. And then it will show you at least part of the prompt. It looks like it kept it pretty short. Descriptions long, we'll press enter. And now you can see it's been added. Our security engineer has been added. Again, this is just a markdown file. So if you go to wherever your cloud code is saved, in my case, I have it in this folder, home, prof synapse, we go to Claude, and you're going to see we have this agents folder. And then we just have all of these different markdown files. So if, for example, I now open up that security engineer file, you can see here it has a little bit of front matter, we call it, with just the name and the description, and then the actual prompt right here, which it will then use. So now when you use Claude, it's going to see, okay, I have a security engineer. This is the description. And then based on that description, it will decide when to use that tool. When you're building these more complicated sub-agent workflows for your coding, it's really important that you have an orchestrator. For Claude, they use something called a Claude.md file. Again, just a normal markdown file called Claude. And this acts as the system prompt for Claude. So we're going to use this as our orchestrator, which is going to delegate out the tasks to all the different sub-agents based on the system prompt that we've developed. So you can see here, I have this prompt where it tells it what it is about the PACT framework, what you're good at, the steps I wanted to follow, the specialists, the agents it has access to. You can see here, I've actually broken down the different coders into backend, frontend, and database and how I want it to execute, which is essentially create a folder to keep track of all the projects and then start delegating out these tasks and keeping track of where we're at so that each time one phase finishes, we come back to this orchestrator, the main Claude Code agent, and then it can follow to the next step. 
So right now I'm inside my LLM adapter kit. The idea of this kit is that it is a TypeScript focused base for if you want to build an LLM application, it can be really annoying, right? To hook up to all these different providers. So I've just tried to give you the code for every single possible provider, as well as the most up-to-date models so that you can just stick this in whatever you're coding if it uses large language models and just be like, hey, build it using this adapter. And you'll just have access to every single model that you can imagine. The idea here is I told it very simply to just add the latest Grok API to this LLM adapter kit. I haven't added that one yet. And you can see here, it comes up with its to-dos. It lists out a path. It finds that I have a Grok folder already that I set up, but it doesn't have this docs folder. So it goes and it creates this docs folder. And you can see here, it created a Grok adapter project file. And you can see it just keeping track of where we're at in the process. I have this running right now. So you can see it's like already midway through the process. And it's keeping track of all the decisions, what it found, everything it needs to know from that orchestrator point of view. After that, we're going to see that it hands it off to the packed preparer. Again, this is the one that's going to do the research. And he used 22 tools, mostly web research, got 45,000 tokens over the five minutes to get the research documentation for the Grok API. This is super important, right? Because we need to make sure we have the latest information. Grok 4 was released like a couple of weeks ago, so it needs to know that's the case. And so here it creates, again, another little file here that's well documented to show exactly how do we use this API, what's the most up-to-date information in terms of things like pricing, et cetera, et cetera. After that, you're going to notice the theme. It handed it off to the packed architect. So now it's taking that research documentation. It's looking at the code base for the specific patterns that I'm already using. And then it's implementing that pattern to make sure that we're staying consistent throughout the code base. Again, using the most up-to-date information. Similarly, the architect is just going to make its own markdown file again to keep track of all this. So it can pass that context over with some pseudo code to make sure that we're again, staying within the patterns and constraints in the architecture that might already exist in our code base. It is now in the back end coding phase. This is all back end, and you can see it looks like it actually just completed here. It did a run build, which means it's building the application to make sure there's no errors, and it seems to have done that successfully. And now it's actually not listening to what it's supposed to be doing. It's creating its own tests, but we'll see. Maybe it'll pass it back to the orchestrator here to actually run the tests. But either way, you get the idea here. There's some prompting that I still needs to be done. I literally did this like an hour ago, but it's a really cool functionality now where you can be more orchestrative in terms of how you're building these applications. And it's not quite a swarm approach because at least right now, it doesn't seem like it can actually do parallel testing, like parallel applications. So for example, if there were three things that needed to code for the back end, the front end, and the database, it doesn't seem like it can do that all in parallel with each agent, but I'm sure they will add that at some point. So you can see, I did give it a little bit of guidance here. I said, pass back to the orchestrator, then onto the tester. I've added my XAI API key so it can actually test it. And that's exactly what it did. So now it's gonna create all these comprehensive tests it's gonna run them and we'll see how it does. Hey, it finally worked. It took 14 minutes <laughs> for it to finish 100,000 tokens, but now it's updating everything and I will push this for you to use if you're interested. I would highly recommend setting up your agents. So again, link in description. I have all of the prompts and how to set this up for yourself as well as the kit if you actually wanna test this thing out. And uh, yeah, it's pretty cool. Would love to hear the agents you're creating and any cool stuff you got going on in Cloud Code as well. Just leave it in the comments.